Mark Levin, and this is Life, Liberty, and Levin Sunday. Thank you for being here with two great guests this evening. We have Congressman Chip Roy, who needs no introduction, and we have his former boss, Senator Ted Cruz, who needs no introduction. But before we get there, let's talk about the border and immigration in ways that typically are not discussed. You keep hearing this term, HR2. HR2. Ten months ago, the Republicans in the House of Representatives passed a bill. It was a bill to secure the border. In fact, it was called the Secure the Border Act. I have it right in front of me. See? A real act, a real potential law, passed by the House of Representatives and sent to the United States Senate. You know what the United States Senate did with it? See this? They did that. Nothing. They killed it. Ten months ago. So they could have had this border security law, which truly was the strictest, most aggressive border security law ever passed by either House of Congress, they could have put it in place. The Republicans in the House did it because Joe Biden wasn't following existing immigration law, which also would secure the border. And Chuck Schumer killed it. Mitch McConnell did virtually nothing to promote it. And that was that. Then they passed this thing, or tried to, called a bipartisan bill. Why is it bipartisan? Because Mitch McConnell and about two other guys supported it. It was negotiated in secret. In fact, it was kept secret for weeks. You and I didn't know what was in it. The most of the Republicans didn't know what was in it. Most of the Democrats didn't know what was in it. Is that how we do representative government, ladies and gentlemen? A secret deal? So it becomes public. It's very long. We've talked about this. I'm one of the few who actually read it. It has more loopholes than the Internal Revenue Code. And here's the bottom line. They talk about all the funding that was in the bill. Why don't they tell you that that funding didn't take place until 2028? Until 2028, when if, God forbid, Joe Biden's reelected, he'd be out of office. Why didn't they tell you the 1,300 Border Patrol agents would be specifically assigned essentially to desk work? not to securing the border, and 1,300. The border is 2,000 miles long. 1,300 new agents, rubber stamping, the processing of illegal aliens into the country, but let's say they weren't. 1,300 new border agents, well, they're not wor working 24-7, so at any given time you may have two or 300 working. It's all a joke. It's a fan dance that they can keep saying, we had a bipartisan bill that would secure the border, but the Republicans wouldn't go for it. Well, the great Mitch McConnell created that talking point for the Democrats. They should have never negotiated it, never negotiated it in secret, because there was never going to be good faith on the side of the Democrats and Biden, who created this, this anarchy, this situation, this massive slavery that's taking place on our border, the worst slavery we've seen in this country, since the end of the Civil War, again, the Democrats. Now, what was in this H.R. 2? Nobody wants to discuss it, so I'll bring it up. This is what the Democrats and Biden didn't want to vote on. For example, it requires the Department of Homeland Security to resume activities to construct a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. Well, we know Biden killed that. Provides statutory authorization for Operation Stone Garden which provides grants to law enforcement agencies for certain border security operations. Wow. Prohibits DHS from processing the entry of non-U.S. nationals, that is, aliens under federal law, arriving between ports of entry. In other words, it requires a manageable administrative process. These are the ports of entry. You want to come in. You get a line. We discuss it. We vet you. We make determinations there. Not everywhere between the, port, the ports of entry. So they said, that's it. It's ports of entry or it's nothing. The Democrats don't believe in that. It limits asylum eligibility to non-U.S. nationals who arrive in the U.S. states at a port of entry. It authorizes the removal of non-U.S. nationals to a country other than that individual's country of nationality or last lawful habitual residence, whereas currently this type of removal may only be to a country that has an agreement in the United States for such removal. As an example, Venezuela, run by a communist genocidal murderer, he has said, Maduro, we're not taking anybody back. Why? He's emptying his prisons. He's sending his criminals here. He's sending his gang members here. 
It's having an effect right now in our country. These Venezuelan criminals, we've never seen this before, that are hooking up with MS-13. He says, we're not taking any back. This law says, fine. They go back to the last place they came from, but they're not staying here. The Democrats didn't want to vote on that. It expands the types of crime that may make an individual eligible for asylum, such as a conviction for DUI, causing another person serious bodily injury or death. You do that, you're out. Authorizes DHS to suspend the introduction of certain non-U.S. nationals at an international border if DHS determines that the suspension is necessary to achieve operational control of that border. Prohibit states from imposing licensing requirements on immigration detention facilities used to detain minors. A lot of Democrat states, this is what they do, through the back door. Authorizes immigration officers to permit an unaccompanied alien child to withdraw their application for admission into the United States, even if the child is unable to make an independent decision to withdraw the application. Why? Because these kids are being used by coyotes and others. They're not actually the children of the people who bring them. And then they're sold into sex slavery and pornography. And if the kid says, wait a minute, that's not really my parent and so forth, what this law would have done is say, okay, let's take that kid, let's address the issue, and we can, in fact, send him back without a so-called adult or parent because that kid's in danger. The Democrats said no. Imposes additional penalties for overstaying a visa and requires DHS to create an electronic employment eligibility confirmation system modeled after the E-Verify system requires all employees to use that system. So you come here illegally, you don't get a job, and you're deported. That was passed 10 months ago by the House of Representatives. Only the Republicans, not a single Democrat, voted for it. It went to the Senate and it died. Well, why don't they bring that up for a vote? Why doesn't Joe Biden ask for that? No, no, he wants the phony bill. You know, immigration in our time. Now, what's the consequences of all this? Well, the Justice Department, pretty much after 2018 and 2019, that is during the, the regime of Biden, has stopped providing us with key statistics. But when they used to, this was from the Department of Justice. It was revised. I want you to read this for the years that it mentions. Non-U.S. citizens who make up 7% of the U.S. population accounted for 15% of all federal arrests, 15% of prosecutions in U.S. district courts for non-immigration crimes in 2018. That is crimes unrelated to the fact that they committed a crime to get here. The portion of total federal arrests that took place in the five judicial districts along the U.S.-Mexico border almost doubled from 1988, 33%, to 2018, 65%. What about 2020? We don't know. They're not very transparent over there now at the Department of Justice. What else? Federal arrests of non-U.S. citizens more than tripled from 1998 to 2018, rising 234%, while federal arrests of U.S. citizens rose 10% over the same period. Oh, 234% versus 10%. I see. Federal arrests of non-U.S. citizens increased from 73,000 in 2017 to 125,000 in 2018, a one-year increase of 50,000. In 2018, non-U.S. citizens accounted for 24% of all federal drug arrests, 25% of all federal property arrests, including 28% of all federal fraud arrests. We're not even talking about local charges. This is all federal. There were 21 federal criminal immigration arrests per 100 apprehensions by the U.S. Border Patrol and the Southwest Border Patrol sectors in 2018, up from 12 per 100 in 2017. Federal arrests in the five judicial districts on the U.S.-Mexico border increased from 76,000 in 2017 to 126,000 in 2018 in one year. Again, where are the 2021, 2022 figures? We don't know. They haven't been released, as best as I can tell. I looked for them. The number of Central American arrests in the five judicial districts along the U.S.-Mexico border almost tripled in one year, 13,527 to 37,519 in 2018. And in 2018, a quarter of all federal drug arrests took place in the five judicial districts along the U.S.-Mexico border. Of suspects prosecuted in U.S. District Court in 2018, 57% were U.S. citizens, 
43% were non-U.S. citizens. I guess everybody's not, as the left used to say, out there doing jobs Americans won't do and picking lettuce. Immigration suspects prosecuted in the U.S. district more than tripled from 1998 to 2018. Again, I'd love to give you the new statistics, which would be massively more, but they won't give them to us, or at least I can't find them. 85,000 unaccompanied minors are missing. What? They're supposed to be tracked by the Biden regime. They're missing. HHS has lost contact with more than 85,000 migrant children in the past two years. Where are they? We don't know. Sex trafficking? Pornography? Two-thirds of all UAC, unaccompanied minors, that leave HHS care work illegal full-time jobs, often in factories and in hazardous conditions. So we have slavery going on, labor slavery of children going on, slavery like we've never seen before in this country since the end of the Civil War under Biden and the Democrats. And they're fine with it, with their phony bipartisan bills, with their phony press conferences, with their lies about the power of the president to address this. It's sickening. Caseworkers with an ORR, that is the uh, Office of Refugee Settlement, claim that HHS regularly ignored obvious signs of labor exploitation, such as single sponsors sponsoring multiple children. Hotspots in the country where many UAC, unaccompanied minors, their sponsors are not the children's parents. UAC with significant debts, direct reports of trafficking, and on and on and on. In other words, under the Biden regime at DHS, it is a disaster. Incompetence. ORR director admitted that only slightly more than a third of unaccompanied children end up with a parent in this fiscal year, which was last year. She said, I believe 37% of children end up with their parent, meaning 63% don't. Then the inspector general did a whole review of this. 16% of children's case files, one or more required sponsor safety checks, lacked any documentation indicating that the checks were conducted. For 19% of the children who were released to sponsors with pending FBI fingerprint or state child abuse and neglect registry checks, children's case files were never updated. It goes on and on and on. These are children. These are unaccompanied minors. They're being encouraged to come to the United States by Biden and the Democrats and his bureaucracy. They're coming to the United States. They're being sold into sex trafficking. They're being sold into pornography. 85,000 of them are missing. They don't know where they are. Tens of thousands of them are working in, uh, in slave conditions in factories without information known about them. We've got slavery on the southern border going on and on and on. And, Bo and Joe Biden shuffles down to the least traffic part of the border doesn't meet anybody of consequence, doesn't talk to anybody of consequence, says if only the Republicans would support his bipartisan bill, if only if Donald Trump had said, let's do it. Joe Biden is a serial pathological liar. He's been his entire life from college and law school, from the Senate, his previous candidacies for president. He's a pathological liar. It does enormous damage to human beings in this country. That's exactly what's going on on the border, ladies and gentlemen, and it won't be fixed until his ass is kicked out of office. It's that simple. We'll be right back. <laughs> 